Hi everybody, this is the second video in the second module about the essay introduction. So let's have a look at how our essay planning from the previous video is linked to the introduction. Basically, the first two steps, the argumentative crux and the question analysis, should be directly addressed in the introduction. As I mentioned in the previous video, these first two steps are supposed to help you better understand the question so that you can better answer it. So, as a logical extension, you want to show the examiner that you understand the question, this is how you've interpreted the question, and now we're ready to answer it. The next three points, the arguments, checking for examples, and sequencing of points, help you in crafting your thesis statement, because knowing what the rest of your essay is likely to sound like is very important in helping you craft a thesis statement. So what goes in an introduction? First, a hook, if you like. It's not essential. Second, describing of the context. So what general background information does your reader need to understand to appreciate the rest of your essay. In my previous video, I mentioned that context is part of question analysis and that we don't always need to do every single possible element of the question analysis. But generally, the context um, is done in most essays, especially because it overlaps with um, the key issues and you want to show that you understand the key issues, the backdrop against which you are writing your essay. Third, other important information from the question analysis, the assumptions, the scope, the perspectives, anything you think is important that you should be addressing, that you should be bringing up in the introduction to show that you understand the question. Number four, the argumentative crux. Show that you know what you need to prove or show to effectively argue your stand. This may not be explicitly stated in the introduction, sometimes it's embedded in the context or even in the thesis statement. And finally, the thesis statement, which we will go into with more depth now. But before that, a quick note, these components need not necessarily be in order and may overlap. Although the thesis is usually most effective at the end, because it's a nice lead on into the start of your essay. So now let's go through each of these elements of the introduction one by one. First is the hook, and my biggest piece of advice to you is not to force it. Choose a hook wisely. If you can't think of something that sounds natural and nice and smooth and that you think would effectively capture the reader's attention, just don't put a hook. You can do without it, it's not essential. Anyhow, some suggestions for hooks, a famous quote, an interesting fact or statistic, ask a rhetorical question, point out a common misconception, set a scene, or start with something seemingly unrelated, but find a way to link it back. Basically, you want to say something interesting that will get the reader thinking, that will get the reader engaged in your essay. So let's use this example to craft an introduction. In the digital age, do newspapers still have a role in your society? So I've done some question analysis and identification of the argumentative crux here, which is step two and three of the introduction. So the way I started is by looking for some key terms or phrases in this question that look like they may be important. So digital age, that looks like a pretty important term. Newspapers, maybe not so important, but we'll get to that. The word still, role, and in your society. Apologies for the terrible pen I need. This takes some getting used to. So first, let's see. Newspapers. That that just seems to be the, the subject matter. So let's not pay any attention. I don't think we really need to define it too clearly. Digital age. That sets the context for us. And of course, the your society. So we're talking about the digital age in your society. And that kind of suggests that... Um, along with the word still, that we may need to compare the past with the present digital age in your society. So which is why I put here context, what has changed that makes this comparison worth analysing, and implication of the word still, because this word still suggests that we need to compare the past with the present. Perhaps newspapers were more significant before, but may have no role at all now. The question says, do newspapers still have a role? So do they have any role at all, or do they have no role? 
whatsoever. Oh, so then we need to ask ourselves, what does it mean for newspapers to have a role? So this is one of those key terms you need to define. So what we think it means is that newspapers serve a purpose, are of some relevance to people in society. So what kind of hook might we come up with for this question? Here are some suggestions, keeping in mind that we don't want to force it and we want to choose wisely. First, a famous quote. If you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. If you read the newspaper, you're misinformed. By Mark Twain. But this kind of quote would suggest that we want to talk about the uses of the newspaper to inform the masses versus the risk that the newspaper may be biased, that it may report um, inaccurate information. So therefore, do newspapers have a role in society? Are they still useful? Next, an interesting fact or statistic. Go and find something about how less people read the newspaper now as compared to before. Or um, what I've written here is actually is sort of from personal experience when I had to do a history project and I went to the National Library um, and looked at the archives of newspapers from dating back to the 1959 elections. You can read through this on your own, but basically it's an interesting fact that is trying to capture the reader's attention. Attention, sorry. Last, a rhetorical question. Do you read the newspaper? Although that's potentially a little bit lame, a little bit overused. Or compare a teenager and his grandmother. Who is more likely to regularly read the newspaper? And so you're already making a point that, you know, maybe newspapers are more relevant, more useful to the older generation, but not the younger generation. More, suge more suggestions point out a common misconception. When one hears the word newspaper, one tends to immediately think of huge grey sheets of paper loosely folded together. But in today's digital age, newspapers are so much more than that. So again, this is saying that, you know, newspapers have adapted. They're different today than they were before, but maybe they're still relevant. Next, setting a scene without getting carrying, carried away. You know how... Um, in coffee shops and hawker centres, we always see elderly people sitting there with one leg up, um, just reading the newspaper, can, we're making a point that, you know, it's, it's a cultural thing. Uh, reading the newspaper is a practice that is ongoing today, therefore it's still relevant. Next, something seemingly unrelated while linking it back. And to do this, I went to straightstimes.com and I just picked a random Straits Times headline and put it there. And then you can link it to how newspapers are adapting. So they're no longer just doing print papers, but they're going online, they're going on social media. Um, and this is very much relevant to the question and the context. So I think we can see from all these examples that the hook leads us into the context in the introduction because usually the hook comes first. It's the very first thing we read in the introduction and then the context follows on. It, it's, a, it's a logical follow on. Um, yeah, so when you're thinking of a hook, keep in mind that it should be pertinent. Um, it should illustrate something that is pertinent in the context of the question um, that is highly relevant to the question. So next, context. In our digital age, we now have social media, tabloids, online forums that provide us with information and news. These sources of information may be more conveniently accessed than traditional newspapers, especially print newspapers. Because of this, have newspapers lost their relevance? This is the context because the question is saying, today is a digital age. So because it's a digital age, have newspapers lost their relevance? So what about the digital age could possibly cause newspapers to lose their relevance? This is what I think it is. Next, question analysis. Um, here, what's important um, are the implications and the key terms. And these were brought up in the question slide here, the implication and the key term. So let's not repeat that again. And move on to the argumentative crux. All we have to say yes to this question is that newspapers have at least some role in society because of or despite the digital age. It doesn't matter how much, it can be a tiny role as long as there is some. On the other hand, what we have to say, um, what we have to prove to say no is that newspapers have absolutely no role in society anymore because of the digital age.
Just as a reminder, the question is, in the digital age, do newspapers still have a role in your society? A role, any role at all. So finally, for the thesis statement. A thesis statement is the ultimate one-liner. The thesis statement is your stance encapsulated into one to two sentences. Three things. It should capture the argumentative crux. It should answer the question with brief justification and a clear stance. And it should acknowledge both sides of the argument. Now, the second point is arguably the most important because that is... You know, essentially what the thesis statement is, is it is your stance in answer to the question. Possible stances for this particular question. The digital age has caused the role of newspapers to be less significant, but they still do have a role. Newspapers do still have a role in society, and the digital age has only altered, not diminished, newspapers' roles. Newspapers have no role today because of the digital age. Now, as I've explained here, the third one is just, no, it, it's unreasonable. It's too absolute. Generally, avoid making absolute statements, uh, taking absolute stances in your introductions, in your essays. Now, for the first two, they're both reasonable. So it depends what arguments you think of. Now, an interesting point to note is that this second possible stance doesn't answer the question in a direct yes or no manner. So we are answering the question. It's not that we're not addressing it. But instead of saying, you know, we have, a, let's say, okay, instead of saying there's a spectrum, there's like that. And it's, you know, newspapers have a small role or newspapers have a big role in society. Instead of saying that because of the digital age, newspapers' role has become smaller or become bigger or moved somewhere laterally along the spectrum, we're saying that, you know, it hasn't necessarily been diminished, it hasn't necessarily changed in size, it's simply been altered in nature. So it may play a slightly different role and we're not too concerned about the specific size of that role. So our thesis statement. I would choose this stance because of the arguments that I came up with, which is that newspapers still provide reliable information today. However, the digital age has provided alternative sources of information. Therefore, newspapers have adapted to use technology to release news quickly and conveniently in a way to keep up, uh, to compete with these alternative sources. Physical newspapers, however, are still regularly read by the elderly who have done so since young. Thus, they retain some of their cultural significance. Keep in mind this is in your society, in Singapore. So from the previous slide, we agree. Newspapers still provide reliable information quickly, even in today's digital age. Thus, they still have a role in society. But this thesis statement doesn't quite acknowledge both sides of the argument. So we've added in this blue part. The digital age has presented alternative sources of news, so it may seem that newspapers' roles have diminished. However, and then insert the part from above. So we see that we've done all three of these things in this thesis statement. We've captured the argumentative crux, which in this case is showing that there is at least some role um, that newspapers have in today's society, as opposed to there being no role at all. See, we say, yeah, and in that, in that sense, we've also answered the question with brief justification and a clear stance. This is our clear stance. They do have a role in society. And brief justification, they still provide reliable information quickly. Um, just, just a note, we also acknowledge um, the question analysis, the context, today's digital age. Uh, we may not explicitly say that it's your society, but it, it'll be that that part can be made clear in the body. Okay. Finally, um, we acknowledge both sides of the argument without sounding contradictory, and that is done here. So we acknowledge the other side of the argument, and we don't sound contradictory by saying it may seem that newspapers' roles have diminished. So this is what some people might think when they consider the fact that the, di the digital age has presented alternative sources of news. So let's do a quick recap of what goes in an introduction. Number one, a hook. Two, describing of the context. Three, the question analysis. Four, address the argumentative crux. And finally, the thesis statements.
that's all from me today in this video. See you in the next one.